Hey guys, it's Mr. Co. I am here to go over the lesson nine and 10 concept development with you guys. Um, for this concept development, you are going to need a piece of paper to take some notes and the lesson nine and 10 templates, which you can find in your math workbook, or there is um, copies available on the um, concept development page in our My Learning course. So let's take a look at our I can statement. I can use the place value chart and metric measurement area models and the number line to compare decimal numbers and record comparisons using our comparison symbols. Um, so that's going to be uh, today's lesson is going to be on comparing decimals. And it looks like we're going to be using um, a few different strategies to help kind of model a decimal comparison. So let's go ahead and jump into it, shall we? Um, so looking at problem number one, we are going to be comparing decimals using measurements. So if we were in a classroom, um, we would be using meter sticks to kind of model how we can look at decimals. So um, you can find this in your lesson nine template. We are going to pretend that this is a meter stick. So um, let's go ahead and label it as one meter and do that for both. So if we remember, one meter is equal to 100 centimeters. So we also need to keep in mind that this whole thing is going to be equal to 100 centimeters or hundredths. Um, I see that our tape diagram is split up into, or tape diagram, our meter stick, is split up into 10 pieces. So that makes me think that each one of these whole boxes is one tenth, or has a value of 10 centimeters. So let's introduce the decimals that we are going to be modeling on these meter sticks. So the first decimal is going to be 67 hundredths, so that's a fraction, or that's our decimal, 67 hundredths and 59 hundredths. So that's going to be 59 over 100 or 0.59. All right, so let's get into how are we actually going to model these decimals. Now, think back to um, lesson three, I think. Um, we kind of did this. Uh, so we might, you might be jogging your memory as I, memory as I kind of work through this. So we have um, 67 hundredths. I, we're trying to shade in these um, meter sticks uh, 67 hundredths and then 59 hundredths in this one. So I can break apart 67 hundredths into six, which is in the tens place, and a seven, which is in the hundredths place, because if we remember the place value immediately to the right of the decimal is the tenths, and then the place value to the right of that is the hundredths. So how would I model six tenths on my um, meter stick that I have here. Um, well, remember how I said earlier that each one of these is going to represent one tenth because I've got 10 total pieces and so one whole thing shaded would be one tenth. Well, in order to shade those six tenths, I would shade one, two, three, four, five, Six. So this represents our six tenths. So how would I represent my hundredths in a tape diagram, meter stick, however you want to view this um, tool here or this model? How would I represent seven hundredths on this model? Now remember that with both the area models and um, these tape diagrams that we used a few lessons ago, we can take each tenth and cut it up into 10 pieces to create hundredths. So I am going to do that. I'm going to make my pen smaller. So I am going to cut each, sorry, not each, just I'm going to cut this last 
tenth into ten pieces so I can shade my hundredths. So if you've watched my videos before, then you'll remember that the way that I do this is I'll cut it in half and then I'll cut each half into fifths. All right, so now I broke apart my um, tenth into ten pieces to make my hundredths. And if I look back, I'm trying to shade seven of them. So I'm going to shade seven by doing that's one hundredth, two hundredths, three hundredths, four hundredths, five hundredths, six, seven hundredths. And I know I shaded seven hundredths because I've got three blank pieces left over. So this, oops. This tape diagram has now been shaded to represent my 67 hundredths. All right, so now I am ready to shade my second meter stick to represent 59 hundredths. Now, what I would like you to do is pause the video and I want you to shade that 59 hundredths on your own and then play the video when you are ready to check your work. All right, so let's go ahead and shade those 59 hundredths. So kind of going off of what I did up here, I can break apart 59 hundredths into five tenths, nine hundredths. And so I can start by shading five tenths. One, two, Three, four, five, and then to do my nine hundredths, that's where I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to cut up this tenth into ten pieces to create eight hundredths. Just gonna double count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, ten. And shade nine of those hundreds that I just created. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right. So now I want you to let me know, well, do your best to let me know, but think in your head or out loud, whatever you're feeling, um, which decimal is bigger? Is it going to be 67 hundredths or 59 hundredths? If you said 67 hundredths, then you would be correct because I want you to think why would 67, like why does it seem like 67 hundredths would be bigger than 59 hundredths? Yeah, so I am um, hoping that you notice that we have more shaded in that 67 hundredths decimal. Like you can see that this guy's shaded out to here, whereas this guy's only shaded up to here. So we have more shaded in our um, tape diagrams, meter sticks. In our model, you can see that more of it is shaded. The 67 hundredths has more shaded than the 59 hundredths. All right, I think we are ready to move on to number two. All right, so for number two, we are going to be comparing decimal or comparing pairs of decimals using an area model and then record the comparison using our comparison symbols. So this is just a different strategy. Um, and I also want you to know that this is from the lesson 10 
um, concept development because we're kind of combining um, before um, you'll find that first uh, problem helpful with the lesson nine uh, problem set. And this, uh, these examples here for problem two are going to be helpful with that lesson 10 problem set. I'm kind of jumping back and forth between lesson nine and 10, but um, I am kind of doing it in a way that I feel like makes the most sense because here we're still shading in models. So um, I'm, I'm doing it in a way that makes the most sense to me and also I'm hoping will make the most sense to you in terms of uh, how each strategy connects to each other. All right, so we are, our decimals that we are going to be comparing are 0 0.15 or 15 hundredths and 0 0.51 or 51 hundredths. So, um, I want you guys to take a second to shade in the area models based on these decimals and play the video when you are ready to go over the answer. All right, so um, we can kind of think of this like the previous example where we break it apart. So here we have a one in the tenths place, so we can break this part into one tenth and five hundredths. So how would I show one tenth in this area model? Well, I have 10 total pieces, so to shade one of them would represent one tenth. Now, how would I shade my five hundredths? Well, just like in the previous example, I had to cut that last piece up into 10 pieces to make my hundredths. Here, I'm going to do the same thing, but with horizontal lines to make hundredths. So I'm going to draw nine horizontal lines. To create 10 pieces. <laughs> okay, so I have my one tenth shaded. Now it's time to shade those five hundredths after drawing the horizontal line. So I'm doing one hundred, two hundredths, three hundredths, four hundredths, five hundredths. So this is how our fifteen hundredths should be shaded in this area model. For the second area model, we can break it apart into five tenths, but there's a five in the tenths place, and then one hundredth. So to shade five tenths, I would, I'm just going to make a line here so I know where to shade to, and I'm just going to do the whole thing. All right, so that's my five tenths, and now I just need to shade one hundredth. So same thing, I'm going to draw those nine horizontal lines to make ten pieces. All right, and I just need to shade. I just need to shade one of these hundredths. So now I want you to think how does the area model help you to compare your 51 hundredths and your 15 hundredths? How does the area model help you compare these decimals? Kind of do the highlighter just to help you visualize it a little bit better, maybe. So how does the area model help you to compare 15 hundredths and 51 hundredths? Well, um, the shaded area for 51 hundredths covers a lot more area than the shaded part for 15 hundredths. Um, for 15 hundredths, you only shaded one uh, column here. We colored in five columns. Um, so how would you phrase which one is bigger using the words uh, greater than. So how would you compare these decimals using the words greater than? If you said 51 hundredths is greater than 
fifteen hundredths, then you would be correct. So I would have wanted you to say fifty one hundredths is greater than fifteen hundredths. And then I want us to notice that because the area model is shaded so much more in the fifty one hundredths, then that kind of explains why. So now I want you to copy down the appropriate comparison symbol. Um, in between the decimals just so we can get that practice in as well because that is part of our I can statement is using those comparison symbols. So go ahead and copy in the center here what would be the correct comparison symbol to go in between. So remember we can always view it as the alligator mouth is eating the bigger decimal so we would have the mouth open towards the 51 hundredths. All right, let's go ahead and do another example. All right, so our next set of two decimals is going to be the 27 hundredths and 7 tenths. So I want you guys to pause the video to shade in your area models to represent these two decimals and then get ready to compare and go over the answer. All right, so let's talk about how would we have our area models shaded for 27 hundredths. Well, We know that 27 hundredths is broken apart into two tenths, seven hundredths. And then seven tenths, I'm getting ahead of myself, sorry. So two tenths would be shaded here and in order to shade my seven hundredths, I would draw those horizontal lines. Okay, so I'm shading seven of those hundredths, so that'd be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, so that's my 27 hundredths shaded. Now, looking at my seven tenths. Well, we don't really need to break apart seven tenths into anything because it's just seven tenths, meaning that we do not need to draw any horizontal lines for the area model. We can just shade our seven out of 10 pieces. Now, I, now that we have our area model shaded, I want you to think which one is greater than 27 hundredths or seven tenths. Which decimal is greater? If you said seven tenths, then you would be correct. I'm hoping that these area models are really helping us see how um, seven tenths is bigger because it has more um, area shaded in the area model. You might be thinking, Mr. Kell, I thought 27 hundredths would have been bigger because it's a, like I see two digits, I see a two and a seven, and here I only see a seven. 27 looks like it would be bigger than seven, and I would say, yes, I understand your thinking, but the thing is, we're working with decimals, and these tenths and hundredths have different values than tens and ones. So um, I'm going to draw us a place value chart just to kind of help explain what I'm talking about. So here's my decimal. This is my tenths place. hundredths place, ones, and then my tens. So um, I think we should be able to realize that the farther left we go to the place value chart, the bigger the numbers get. So um, 
think after the tens is the hundreds, after the hundreds is the thousands, after the thousands is the ten thousands. We're definitely getting into bigger place values the farther you go down to the left. So remember, um, left is this way, right is this way. So if, keeping that in mind, if the farther left we go, the bigger the place value, think about the 27 hundredths. Which one has the bigger place value? Well, it would be the place value that is farthest to the left based on what we talked about here. So the uh, bigger place value is the tenths place. So if you were thinking, oh, 27 hundredths is bigger than seven tenths because it's a it's got two uh, digits in the number and uh, seven tenths only has one digit in the number you need to think that the two or the tenths place is the higher place value so if i'm comparing place values i have two tenths compared to seven tenths seven tenths is bigger because if you're thinking about comparing uh, place uh, the numbers in the same place value column seven is bigger than two so hopefully that kind of helps uh, clarify why seven tenths is bigger, even though maybe at first glance it doesn't seem bigger because that's a mistake that a lot of my students have made in the past where they see two digits, they see a two and a seven, and they see one digit and they automatically think this one's bigger just because when we're working with whole numbers, that is normally um, correct, but because we're working with decimals, it kind of has, to, it makes us, it has to it causes us to think a little bit differently or we're forced to think a little bit differently about um, the place values and where they're located and how it affects the size. So I want you to go ahead and um, fill in the comparison symbol. Whoops. Whoops. I want you to fill in the comparison symbol in between here to uh, appropriately reflect which decimal is bigger. So remember, we can use that alligator analogy where it's open towards the bigger decimal. So that, so the decimal or the comparison symbol opened to the right will um, show that seven tenths is bigger. All right, so this is gonna be the last example for problem number two, where we use area models to compare decimals. I would like you to go ahead and shade in the area models to represent the decimals that are shown below. All right, so here we have seven tenths. So I think the other example was seven tenths as well. So we can just go ahead and shade that's four, that's five, that's six, and that's seven. So I've got my seven tenths shaded. Here we have 70 hundredths. So um, I would need to, <coughs> I would need to um, draw my horizontal lines to make hundredths. I've done a lot of talking today. My throat is dry. Mm. All right, so I made my hundreds and I'm ready to shade 70. So that's 10, 20. 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. All right, so now I'm looking to see which has more shaded. Well, what do you think? Some of you guys might have realized, Mr. Co, they're both shaded the same because 7 tenths is equivalent to 70 hundredths. In both cases, we have shaded seven columns to represent our decimal. So we would fill in the appropriate symbol as they are equivalent or they are equal to each other. 
All right, so I think we are ready to go on to problem number three. All right, so we are here with problem number three. So number three, we're gonna be comparing decimals using a place value chart. So this kind of connects to what I was talking about with problem number two, where I was kind of talking about how um, the place values farthest to the left are the bigger place values. And we kind of talked about how that can be used to compare. Here we are going to be drawing a place value chart. Up to the ones. So here's my ones, I'm gonna put my decimal right there my tenths, and then my hundredths. All right, so I'm gonna record each of um, my decimals here in my place value chart, and then we're kind of gonna talk about how to compare using the place value chart. So our avocado weighs two tenths of a kilogram, our apple weighs 12 hundredths of a kilogram. Our bananas weigh 6 tenths of a kilogram. And then our grapes weigh 61 hundredths of a kilogram. All right, so I think I'm actually going to draw like some dotted lines just to kind of help me separate my numbers so I can like kind of focus in on each one. All right, so going back to what I was talking about um, in problem two, place values, so we're saying left, right? So, um, by the way, if you're ever struggling to remember what is the left and what is the right, if you hold up your fingers like this, whichever um, L looks like it's facing the right direction, like the correct way that an L should go, a capital L, that is your left hand. So, if you're ever like trying to figure out which one's your left, which one's your right, if you hold them up, then whichever L looks like the correct capital L, that's going to be your left hand. So that can kind of help you tell the difference. All right. So um, place values to the right are bigger. Um, and then place, I just said place values to the right. Place values to the left is they're bigger the farther left that you go. And this makes sense because if we think of a place value chart that we're used to, um, we have ones then tens, and then hundreds, and then thousands. And I think we can agree that tens and hundreds and thousands are bigger than ones, right? So we need to keep that in mind. The farther to the left that you go is the highest place value. So when we're looking at decimals, we are looking at the place value farthest to the left. So I wrote all of my decimals in my place value chart. I don't have any ones. So the place value that I'm looking at is the tenths here because this is the place value that is farthest to the left. And so that's where I'm going to look to see which um, decimal is biggest. And that's gonna be done just the same as I would compare a whole number by seeing which has the biggest number. And then if the values are the same, I'm gonna move to the next highest place value and then compare that way. So if I'm looking at my tenths place, I see um, which numbers are the biggest. Well, I think we can all agree that six is bigger. It's the biggest number here, but we do have two of them. So remember what I said, if this was a whole number, um, we would move to the next highest place value and then compare those. So we're going to do the same thing with the decimal. So I'm so I have two sixes and then I'm going to look to the next highest place value, which is the place value to the right, which is my hundredths. And I have a one 
compared to a zero because six tenths is the same thing as 60 hundredths. So I can think of this as just being a zero. Which number is bigger, zero or one? It's going to be the one. So thinking, I think we're going to list our um, fruits from biggest to smallest. So with that being said, the uh, grapes have the highest mass. So I'm going to list grapes and then I'm going to put the mass 0 0.61. Uh, and then I'm just going to cross this out to say that I have already listed it. So now I'm going to go back to my tens place and compare. So which number is the biggest? It's that second six. Um, so the next highest uh, digit is going to be, sorry, the next highest uh, fruit is going to be my bananas with a mass of six tenths. So connecting what I said back to problem two, notice how um, the six, it's just a six and it's the second biggest number. So don't think like, oh, this 12 is bigger than six, 12 is bigger than six. So the apple has more mass than the grapes or the bananas. No, because we're thinking about the size of the place value. That so we said that the place value farthest to the left is the highest. So that means that even though the six is a six all by itself, it still has more value than the one in the tens place. Because you can also think if I'm comparing six tenths to one tenth, six out of 10 pieces shaded on a tape diagram would be more than one out of 10 pieces shaded on a tape diagram. So next is our bananas. I'm gonna cross that out. And now what's the next uh, highest fruit? Um, so we're looking at our tenths place. Which number is bigger? The two. Two is bigger than one. Two tenths is bigger than one tenth. So the avocado is the next highest mass at two tenths of a kilogram. I should probably add in kilograms here. And I'm gonna cross that out. And so that just leaves my two tenths or my apple. Okay, so that is how we use a place value chart to help us compare our decimals. Now, you don't always need to draw a full place value chart like the one that I did. You could even just line up your numbers. Like this. And just imagine your place values. Now, you just need to be careful and make sure that like your tenths are lined up with your tenths. <clears throat> So you can just write them like this and then think, okay, this is my tenths place and just kind of do it a little bit more mentally. But if you need to draw a place value chart like I just did, you can do that too. Um, don't be afraid to show, like completely show your work in order to make sure that you get your answer right. All right, so I think we're ready to go over our last problem. By the way, this was um, in regards to lesson nine. So I had said before that I was kind of jumping back and forth. So my problem one was lesson nine. Problem two is lesson 10. Problem three is in reference to lesson nine. Um, I'll make sure to note that in the video breakdown uh, down below in the description. Okay, let's finish up this video. It's getting a little long. All right, so um, for problem four, we're going to be comparing decimal numbers on a number line and then record the comparison using our comparison symbols. So um, I think you have this in your lesson 10 template, I think. If not, you're going to need to draw your own number line. It's got um, these four big lines. Um, for your endpoints and then 10 spaces in between. So you are going to, if you need to pause the video to draw your number line, go ahead and do that now. All right, so we're going to label the endpoints as four and three tenths and then four and six tenths. So that means that 
each of these um, bigger tick marks are going to represent tenths, and then in between is going to represent our hundredths. These are the decimals that we are going to be plotting on our number line. So I want you guys to go ahead and um, try plotting this on your own. Go ahead and pause the video and I'll give you some time to work and then play it whenever you're ready to go over the answer. All right, so for four and 38 hundredths, think which between which two tenths is four and 38 hundredths gonna go between? Well, it's going to go in between 4 and 3 tenths and 4 and 4 tenths because it's more than 4.3, but it's less than 4.4. So where would 4 and 38 hundredths go on our number line? Well, remember I said that our tenths are already labeled, so in between the tenths are your hundredths. So I'm already at 4.3 or 4 and 3 tenths here. Now I need to make some jumps to get to 8 hundredths. So I'm thinking... This is kind of like 4.31, this is kind of like 4.32, this is kind of like 4.33, and so on. So 4.31 are 4 and 31 hundredths, 4 and 32 hundredths, 4 and 33 hundredths, 4 and 44 hundredths, 4 and 45 hundredths, 4 and 46 hundredths. When did I say? Mm. Disregard that. I labeled them correctly, but then I started saying 4 and 40 something. 4 and 31 hundredths, 4 and 32 hundredths, 4 and 33 hundredths, 4 and 34, 4 and 35 hundredths, 4 and 36 hundredths, 4 and 37 hundredths. This would be 4 and 38 hundredths. Where would your 4 and 5 hundredths, sorry, 4 and 5 tenths go? Well, that would go right here because it's already labeled for us. Yay! All right. So now we're ready to compare. I want you to fill in with the correct comparison symbol which decimal is bigger. So we would have wanted to make sure the alligator mouth is opening to the right um, because if we look four and five tenths is further down the number line than four and 38 hundredths. Okay, because we can see that like our numbers are ascending, they're getting bigger as we go down the number line. So um, our four thirty eight hundredths is down here, whereas our four and five tenths is kind of up there. So that is why we have our comparison symbol open towards the four and five tenths. You can also think of it like um, in the place value chart, going back to what we talked about with problem number three, we've got ones, tenths, hundredths, decimal. Um, so we've got four ones, three tenths, eight hundredths, four ones, Five tenths. So starting at the place value farthest to the left, because we said farther you go down to the left, the higher the place value. So that would be our ones place. Um, there's a four in both of these decimals. So we're going to go to the next highest place value, which is the tenths. So looking at my tenths, five is bigger than three. So that is why four and five tenths is my bigger decimal. All right, so that brings this to the end of our video. I hope um, you found it informative. I hope you found it helpful. I hope you found that it's um, going to be useful to you on the problem set. So thanks so much for watching, guys. I hope you're doing well. And uh, until next time, bye.